Okay, so I wanted to just kind of walk you through the beginning steps of setting up a project um, based off of a set of architectural drawings. So this is the project set. It's a very kind of small, um, a small kind of set of these technical drawings. We have some floor plans and um, reflective ceiling plans, elevations, and one section. So really minimal. Um, and just really kind of straightforward. So we're just going to um, work on setting up the Revit file. And then what I want to focus on is this little area here, um, which is an area that a lot of, which is just a, a bit of a tricky area. And it's going to require us to edit the wall profile and make some small adjustments. Okay, so we're going to get started um, by going by opening up a brand new file in Revit. Switch over to Revit. And we're going to go new, just like the other files. We'll go to browse and then residential. We'll hit open and then OK. We'll go ahead and let that open. So the first few things we're going to do is just basic setup. Um, make sure that your thin lines is turned on so it has that blue, kind of that light blue window around it. We're going to set our detail level, set that to fine. Now this detail level setting, we're going to have to do with all of our drawings. So we're gonna have to do the same thing for second floor, for our, our elevation sections and so on. But I typically will um, do that once we get there, right? Once we start working on our second floor and start looking at sections, elevation, things like that. If you wanna go ahead and just feel like you're gonna forget that um, in the future, you can just jump over to your second floor and make that change um, right now and do the same with your elevations, okay? Then the next thing is going to be setting our temporary dimensions. Uh, we're gonna go up to manage, additional settings, annotate, this is all stuff that has been covered in the previous um, lectures. Now, the requirement for this set of drawings, um, it lists that all dimensions are set to the faces of core. So that means that uh, my temporary dimensions are going to be set to faces of core. Again, this is sometimes tricky for individuals, but as you start working in an office, um, there's already kind of an office set of standards where they'll say, hey, we do all of our dimensions to the faces or they'll say to the faces of course. So you would just follow the same office standards or if you don't have office standards and you're gonna going to be doing this entirely on your on your, on your your own, then you would go ahead and make that call and say, when this project is done, I'm going to be dimensioning everything to drywall to drywall or faces to faces, faces of core to faces of core. So you could make that call at this point. Doors and windows, we're gonna set that to openings. I'll hit okay. And then I save the file. Okay, so this is just standard practice. Whenever I open up a brand new full, uh, brand new working file, those are our absolute kind of settings. When you just go up to file, we'll go save as, save as project, and then we would. I'm gonna, just going to put mine on the desktop, um, but you would call this project one. Okay, I'll hit save, and we're set. Okay. All right, so now the first thing that we do before we even start modeling is we set our elevation height, so our level line. So let's quickly go back to um, the set of drawings. We need to, when we start building the models, right, we need to understand how high are the walls being, um, how high are we building the walls? We only do that or we can only see that in the elevations, okay? So let me, um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. So we take a closer look. So we have the second floor set to 10 feet and then the roof set to 20 feet. So let's go back and let's go ahead and set that. We're gonna come over to any elevation. We can go over here on the left-hand side. Let's just stick to the north elevation. And we come over here and we actually end up seeing, so we have nine feet and 18 feet, but then we also see these additional level lines, okay? So everything below the first floor has to do with the foundation. So if we even look down here, it says foundation, basement, top of footing, bottom of footing, okay? 
But on the drawing set, we didn't have those. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide these. So I'm going to select them, hold down the control key. Look at my cursor again when I hold down the control key and I could do a multiple selection. And then I can just right click anywhere on any on any one of these lines. I'll right click and we have the option to hide, hide in view. Now we have the option to hide in view element and category. And we'll talk about hiding a little bit um, more down the line, but hiding an element means that we are hiding just the items that are or just the elements that are being selected. Okay. If I was to select hide um, category, that's going to, to hide everything that is within that category. So right now we're looking at, we have the level line selected, correct? So if I select hide in category, it's going to hide all of my level lines, which is not what I want because I still want my first floor, second floor, and roof level lines, okay? Mm -hmm. So instead what I want is hide and view elements because I only want to hide the elements that I have selected. Now, if I ever want to bring them back, we have this blue light bulb down at the bottom. And if we hover over it, it'll say reveal hidden element. So I could click there. And it's pretty much the same step. I would select each one of these or select the items that I want, right click. And here we have unhide in view elements. Okay. I don't want to do that though. So now I'll hit the escape and then I'll click on the light bulb again. And it's going to go back to the view. Now, when I go to the east elevation, you'll notice that oh, foundation is there. That's odd. So let's go ahead and select this one. Um, we're going to hide in view element. Let's go to our south elevation. So they're all here. Let's go ahead and follow these steps again. So we're going to have to hide. Notice it says hide in view. So that's only hiding in this view, meaning our south view. So let's hide in view there and let's go down to west and let's do the same thing right click hide in view element now the other thing that we want to do is adjust our heights okay so our second floor was set to 20 feet so i'm sorry it was set to 10 feet so i'm going to just double click inside here and change this to 10 feet and then our roof was set to 20 feet and we'll adjust that just like that. Okay. The other thing is, oh no, never mind. I thought we were going to have to change the text. If we had to change the text, instead of clicking on the dimension, we can just click on the actual name itself. And that would um, change the text. So, just a little side note um, we could also select, just click once on the level line. And you see this kind of um, it's a break line or we call it an elbow. We could click on this elbow right here. It's that little tiny thing. If I zoom in, it doesn't get any bigger, okay? Um, but if I click on that, and that'll create this elbow that I, allows me to adjust and move if we needed to do something like that, okay? So I'm going to hit Control-Z to undo. Remember our control commands, Control-Z is to to undo, control Y is to redo. And that's it. So now we'll go ahead and hit the save button or control S on the keyboard. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start modeling. So let's go back to our PDF. Now this is the tricky part. Okay? This is the part that people get confused. So if we, this is our north elevation. If we take a look at our north elevation, you'll notice that we have a portion of the wall that is pushed back. Let's go back over here, right? We have this portion of the wall that is pushed back from this facade, okay? So this is pushed back and there's an opening on the west side. So this is a little kind of enclave right there. So if we go to the elevations, all right, we begin to see that there. And if I go down to the west elevation, we see that opening here, okay? The thing though, <clears throat> that we'll also notice is that this wall, okay, 
or most of these walls actually go from the ground all the way up to the roof. And that's something that um, students have a hard time understanding or just a bit tricky at first in understanding is we think, okay, well, our first floor, if we're modeling our walls on the first floor, then our exterior walls, they go from our first floor up to second floor, but they don't. If you look at any two-story home or residence, um, that wall that goes all the way up actually goes from the first floor and it goes all the way up to the roof. So it's continuous. So that means that when we do, when we model our walls, we have to set them from the first floor all the way up to level roof with the exception of this area. So what happens in this area? Well, do we create another wall that it goes from second floor to roof? If we come back on this side and we take a look at that other elevation, we have something similar on this side. So what we're going to do is create one large wall, and then we're going to edit the profile. So kind of we're going to cut into the actual wall to create these openings. Okay, but the wall itself is going to be one continuous wall. Now I'm not going to walk through the steps on adding the dimensions to everything. Okay, but similar to the previous lectures where um, we modeled out buildings. You're going to start with the exterior, okay? And make sure that you have all the exterior dimensions correct and then model the interior walls. But this is the area that I'm going to focus on. Okay, so let's zoom in. Right there. Let's actually go in a little bit closer so we could really see those dimensions. Now remember all of, all of these dimensions are set to the face core. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and model these walls and then model this kind of inside portion there. So let's go back to Revit. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to go to the architecture tab. We're going to go to wall and we're going to choose our exterior wall, which is a exterior wood siding on wood stud. We're going to set our location line. Remember, all of our dimensions were set to the core face. Okay, And if we take a close look at the dimensions, they're also set to the core face on the exterior side. And the, the walls are going to be constrained to the first floor. And the top constraint, these walls are going to go all the way up to the roof level. You'll also notice, by the way, that we still have the basement and the foundations and the footing levels, the ones that we hid. They're still there, they're just hidden. So Revit still gives us the option to dimension to them or, or constrain a wall to them if we wanted to. We'll hit roof and then we're set, okay? Now I'm going to, let's go, let me take a quick look. I'm just gonna do the overall. So the overall on this side is 61 feet, seven and a quarter, and then 28, two. 61, seven and a quarter. So I'll go ahead and start down here. Okay, make sure it's from the outside. Oops, I didn't do that correctly. I told you we were gonna do core face, but I clicked on finish face. Okay, and the way I figured that out was when I was Zooming in and looking, I noticed that my cursor was not on the core face, it was on the finished face. Okay, so I'm going to go up. Now I forgot what I said. It was 67 feet. Yeah, I forgot. 67, no, 61 feet, seven and a quarter. 61 feet. So 61 feet, seven and one quarter. Enter. And then it was 28 feet, two. 28, two. And then I believe going down, it's somewhere, something about 32. Okay, and I'm just gonna stop right there. Now you'll notice that I just clicked and I started modeling. Now that's gonna be a problem because if my elevation marker is set there, then it means my elevation is not going to catch, my north elevation isn't gonna catch the actual north elevation of my building. So we we can do one or two things. The ideal thing is just to select all of my walls, use the move tool, MV, okay, right up here. And I'm just going to grab it 
and move it. And it gives me that blue kind of dotted line to give me a reference of how big the object that I'm moving is. And I'll move it like that. What I could also do is just move the elevation. So I could select that, move the elevation marker, MV, click, and just kind of bring this farther out, just like that. Okay, but you want whatever you're modeling to be in between our elevation markers. I'll probably move this down too, just so that it doesn't get in the way. Okay, so what we model wants to be inside our, our elevation markers because when we click on elevation, we wanna be able to see the elevation, okay? The other thing too, I forgot to mention, I prefer working in this hidden line format, um, but if you prefer to work in the shaded view so that we can get color, I understand that helps students, especially when you are um, just understanding, trying to understand the wall types, right? We understand that there's drywall on one side and on the other side we have the plywood sheathing and then the wood um, the wood siding. And that's, that is easier. The different colors do help to understand um, what is what. So it helps us to understand that this is the interior side, that's the exterior side, okay? And just a reminder, this is always tricky at first as well. When you're just starting off, if you click up and let's say it's on the opposite side, right? Notice that um, the wall can flip and we flip that wall just by hitting the space bar. So you can do that as well if your first click when you start building your wall, it's not in the direction you want it to. It's not orienting itself in the in the way that you want it to. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do <clears throat> is create the opening on this side. Okay. And I'm going to do that by going to my elevation that faces this side. So we're going to double click over here on this triangle. And that's gonna take me to my west elevation or I could also double click on West Elevation over here in the project browser, okay? Whichever one is easiest for you. And there's my wall, okay? I'm going to click on the wall and up in the ribbon window, we, have the, we now have the option that says edit profile. Edit profile allows us to, just quickly, edit the profile of the wind, uh, of the wall, as well as editing um, or any openings in the wall. So if I do that and I hit check mark, I now have a large opening inside this wall, okay? Now there's a couple of rules that we have to follow when editing, um, when editing the profile. And the two biggest rules is that our profile line, which is this magenta line, Okay, has to be continuous. So we can't have any gaps. It, it can't have any openings. That's rule number one. We can't have any intersections. So if I wanted to create a profile that looked something like this, right? This is an intersection. So it needs to be one continuous line without any point in the profile that can split or bifurcate, right? Where there's an intersecting magenta line. If this is what we wanted to do, then we would have to take this line, use our split tool, which is right up here, split this line with this gate key. So now we could take this line and bring it over here and take this line and bring it over there. So that makes it one continuous line. Hit the check mark to finish. And now that's my wall. And then the third rule, I'm going to undo all of this. The third rule is we can't have any overlapping lines. So in other words, I can't have a portion that goes over an existing line. See, I'm already getting a warning. It'll still let me do it. It's just giving me a warning. And that sometimes is the trickiest for students because we sometimes, when we're looking at it, we can't tell that there's two lines on top of one another. The only way we could tell is we place the cursor over it and then we notice that a portion gets highlighted and not the entire line. So you have to be very careful that when you're working with these magenta um, or the, these profile lines, 
You don't accidentally um, add a line over an existing line. If we tried to do that, we hit the check mark and we're going to get error sign. It says cannot have overlapping lines and it highlights the area, but it doesn't actually highlight the overlapping line, okay? So we can go ahead and delete this. <clears throat> so those are the three rules. It has to be continuous, no, and no breaks. You can't have anything intersecting and you can't have lines on top of um, an addition, or you can't have an additional line on top of a profile line. The other thing that you'll notice, I'm going to hit that X to get out. The other thing you'll notice is that when we hit this edit profile, I want you to take a look at the ribbon window. This is known as sketch mode. Okay, Sketch mode, there's going to be several commands um, that take you into sketch mode. And what sketch mode is, is, is a, um, it's a sketching phase in Revit that allows you to add detail or make certain changes before solidifying and saying, okay, this is what I want. Now sketch mode, if you go over to the architecture tab, you'll notice that all of these commands are ghosted. So we actually can't click on anything. So what this is doing is pausing all of the commands in Revit, okay? And we come over here to the modify tab and so that we can make the changes so we can sketch the things that we need to sketch out um, before actually creating and solidifying and saying, okay, this is what we want. Now, there's only two ways of getting out of sketch mode and that's in the X to cancel what you're doing or the check mark to finish what you're doing, okay? That's it. So I could hit, if I'm done, I would hit the check mark or if I wanted to cancel, I would hit the X. And by doing one of the others, that takes us out of sketch mode, okay? And makes all of the commands um, selectable again. So if you ever find yourself um, making a sketch and editing and you think you're done, and then you come over here and realize that everything is ghosted, there's a good chance that um, you're still in sketch mode. And so you're gonna have to go back to the modify tab, the highlight it all the way on the right and select the X or the check mark. Okay. So what I'm going to do now at this point is um, create our opening. I'm going to do that by, there's a, there's a variety of different ways of going about this. Okay. And as you learn more of the software, you begin to learn how to use these tools creatively. So I'm going to teach you a few different ways. I'm going to select the line. Okay. And I can literally just sketch it out and then use temporary dimensions. But what I'm actually going to do this time is let's play with the offset tool. So we're going to change this to five feet. And I believe it was five feet, five and one quarter, um, one quarter inch. And that was from this side here. Okay. You'll notice that the profile line is the profile to the center of the wall. Okay, it's not to the face of the wall. So I'm going to click here and I'm gonna go up. And now I notice that it's on the left-hand side. I'm starting to draw a profile line on the left-hand side, but I want it on the right-hand side. So now I'll hit the space bar and that's gonna flip. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up to say eight feet, just eight enter. I'm gonna, oops, now I'll go ahead and get out of the line tool. I'm going to highlight this and delete that because now I no longer want an offset. And I'll, I'm going to, oops, let's set that to zero. I'll come across here. And I'm not going to specify, um, I'm not gonna specify, I could specify the, the distance, but I'm gonna edit that as well down the line. So we're just gonna go, I'll keep it short. So let's say four feet, and I'm going to come down, okay? Now it still wants to, I'm still in the draw command. So I'll hit the escape key to get out of the draw command. Oops. But I'm still in sketch mode because I haven't hit the check mark or the X. Now, again, the rule is we can't have any intersecting points. It has to be one continuous profile. So I will select this line 
because I want to split this so that I could delete it. Okay, or just delete that portion. So I'll hit split element and I'm going to split the line right there. I'll hit this gate key twice to get out of that split element. And now I have this line into two elements. Now I can select the line and then click and drag the grip point. But I'm going to link to undo that. The faster way is using our trim extents tool. So we're the the uh, command is TR, so I'm going to hit TR on the keyboard. And now if you guys remember, the trick with the, tr the, uh, the trim extents is that we click on the portions of the line we want to keep. So I'm going to click on this portion, click on that portion, click on this portion, and click on that portion. I'll hit the escape key to get out. And there we have it. Okay, We have one continuous line, and we have an opening. So now I think I'm ready. I'll hit the check mark. And there we have it. So let's go to our first floor. And we have an opening there. Okay. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go ahead and build this wall out. And I'm actually just going to add it. Okay. And I'm going to then adjust it with the temporary dimensions. But before we do that, this portion of this wall doesn't go all the way up. Remember that this kind of enclave, this little entryway here is only on the first floor. We actually have a room and space up on the second floor. So this wall here, this horizontal wall, doesn't go all the way up to the roof. It only goes up to the second floor. So we're going to have to come back over here. Core face exterior is correct. Base constraint first floor is correct. Top constraint up to level second floor. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and click and hit this gate key. Now, if I go and take a look at the drawing, okay, the drawing is five feet, 10 inches from my opening. So what I'm going to do is select this wall, move this temporary dimension to that point, and then adjust, make sure that it's in the temporary dimensions, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, making sure that it's selected to the face of core. And I already forgot the distance again, five feet, 10. So I'll go ahead and now change this to five, 10, enter. And there's my, that's the distance. However, I still have that portion of the wall. Okay, so the question is, well, what do I do with that? Well, there's our trim extends tool again coming in being handy. So I'll hit TR. And again, we're going to keep the portion. I'm going to click on the portion of the wall. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure if this is going to work. Nope. I take that back. Let's go try it this way. Nope. OK, so that didn't work. I was hoping that we could do the trim extends there, but it's not going to allow me to do it because this is an opening. This is the edit profile. Right, this is one continuous wall. So by using the trim extent, it's going to want me to use the trim extents, or it's going, it recognizes this as one entire wall with one opening, because it's true. We have wall space up on the second floor as well. So what I'm going to do instead is just click and drag this down, which is actually a lot easier. And there we go. If we click and drag it, let me oh, if we click and drag it, um so that it stops in line where this wall starts, it'll automatically turn the corner for us. Okay. And I'm pretty much going to follow the same steps with this opening over here. So let's go take a look at our north elevation. Select the wall. We're going to edit the profile. Okay. However, however, this one here. If we take a look, yeah, let me go ahead and share the screen. So we take a look at the drawing. Okay. If we take a look at the drawing, it tells me that it's eight feet, one and a half inches. But we have to be careful so that to really take a look at and see where are we dimensioning to. So this is eight feet, one and a half inches from 
the exterior side of this wall to the interior side of this wall. Okay, so we have to keep that in mind. And then we have, that's the opening right there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> last time I used the offset tool. This time what I'm going to do is um, pretty much similar to the way we created this opening. Okay. So let's go back to Revit. What I'll go ahead and do is use the draw tool. I'm already, I had already clicked on edit profile. Notice that I'm in sketch mode because I get the X and the check mark. We, um, when you see the X and the check mark, it tells you that tell that you're already in sketch mode. These these two buttons only pop up when you're in sketch mode. So I'll hit the draw tool, or the line tool, and and this time I'm not going to go. We still have that a small portion of the wall, so I don't want to entirely cut a profile out. I still want to leave a little portion. So I'm just going to go up. We're going to go up to eight feet, cut across. And this time I'm going to cut across to, it really doesn't matter if we go, um, I'm not going to do the same dimension. Um, it doesn't have to be the same dimension as the eight foot one, one inch. Um, let's go shorter. Actually, last time I went shorter, this time let's go longer just so that you can see how this works. It doesn't, it's irrelevant whether we go short or, or long. I'll hit this gate key. We're going to do the same thing, select this. We're going to trim it. Doesn't matter where we trim it, it doesn't have to be in the center. We'll just trim that, hit the escape key twice to get out of the trim tool, the slice tool, sorry. Um, sorry, split element. I keep getting all these commands confused. We'll hit TR for trim extents. Click there, click there. This here we're going to have to zoom in because that's the portion, that little portion of the wall that we're going to want to keep. And then hit that check mark. Okay. Now we're going to get an error code. I believe we're going to get an error code because this wall, um, this line for the profile, since it's at the center, it's not really joined too well to this corner wall, to the west wall. So let's hit the check mark. Yep. Can't keep elements joined. So it's saying it's not, it can't keep this wall joined to our west elevation wall. So we're going to have to hit an um, unjoin elements. And that's something we're gonna have to deal with in a minute. So now let's go to our floor plan. And so this is what it's talking about, right? We had to unjoin that. So let's deal with that afterwards. What I'm going to do now is draw a wall and I'm going to draw this wall, that wall that is eight feet, um, one and a half inches away. We're gonna set this core face Exterior, which is what we want. Uh, do we want that? It's kind of irrelevant. We could leave it just so that we're not always changing it. Um, we could also go core face interior if we wanted to. Um, but we're just going to draw a wall and then adjust the temporary dimensions anyway. So it's irrelevant if you know whether we go exterior or interior face. Base constraint, first floor, top constraint, second floor, we're good to go. So now I'm just going to build a wall that goes not all the way up, just there. Okay, I'll hit the escape key. And now I will take, I'll select this wall. And I'm going to adjust my temporary dimensions to match the dimensions, um, the eight foot, one and a half inches. So I'm going to click and drag. Of course, it doesn't want to grab that side. For some reason, it doesn't want to grab the core face. So I still have the finger on my cursor. Now, this is a common mistake, or not a common mistake, but it's a it's a glitch in the software um, that you will experience from time to time. Revit has so much information to consider that it sometimes, and this is my understanding, that it sometimes um, forgets some of the smaller um, some of the smaller things. So we're going to move the cursor over um, the core face. If you zoom in, my cursor is over the core face on the interior side. And then I'll just hit the tab key on the keyboard. Okay. And actually, if you keep hitting, clicking on the tab key, it's going to continue to toggle through the different um, location lines that it thinks that you're referring to. So finally, we are selecting the core face on the interior side. Oops. 
And let's move this over to the core face on the exterior side. It's not getting, so let's, there we go. Hit the tap key several times until we finally get there. And now change the temporary dimension. Eight feet, one and one half, enter. So now we have this base. And now it's just a matter of using the trim extents, TR. Oh, wait, no, we can't do that. That's the same exact mistake I made over here. What we'll do is we'll just select the wall. In my case, let me bring this wall up. Notice that I can drag this wall up and once it hits the center of the wall, I get that blue line. So I'll go ahead and bring that wall there. I'll take this and I'm going to drag this to this side, right? Not to the interior side. I want it to connect all the way to the exterior side. And there we have it. Now, by moving this wall over and connecting here, that kind of readjusts and makes Revit reanalyze it, its wall condition over here on this side. So that's why when we zoom in, this corner is now um, connected. Okay. So that works in that way as well. So when we take a look at our, you know what, let's better yet, let's take a look at the 3D model. We can come over here to the house, and this is the 3D view. And this is what we have, okay? To orbit around in the 3D view, you have to hold down the shift key on the keyboard, and then the right button mouse, uh, the right button on your mouse. So I'm holding down the shift key, and I'm holding down the right button on my mouse, and that's allowing me to orbit around. Okay, then I could use the wheel to zoom in and I could take a look at what I've created. Okay, so the 3D view is really good to just, just to be able to see what it is you have created and making sure that it is correct. Okay, but again, we don't, it's not recommended that you model in the 3D view. Okay, it's, the 3D view is really just there for reference. But this is what we want. This is actually exactly what we want. So this is where I'm gonna leave you. Um, from here on out, you can go ahead and continue adding all of the walls um, that you need. And then doing the same with, and then adding the interior walls and doing the same for the second floor. Now, I'm gonna head over to the second floor really quick because as you begin to add walls on the interior side, you're going to begin to see them on the second floor and they can be really distracting, okay? Now they come in as what we call an under layer. So it's think of it as, you know, the, the first floor plan is underneath. And so we can see it, but we can't select it, okay? Sometimes it's, ref it's really useful to be able to reference, say some of the walls on the first floor or certain things that are happening on the first floor um, or on any floor for that matter. But sometimes it can be really confusing. So. If you want to turn them off, and I actually do recommend turning them off um, for the time being while you start um, adding all of your interior walls. We're going to come over here on the left-hand side in the properties box, scroll down, and right here where it says underlay, we're going to click on first floor, click on the pull down, and select none. I will hit apply, and it goes away. Okay. And that's it. From here on out, you can go ahead and do all of your exterior walls and the interior walls. Okay. Good luck, everyone.